Iron Jugulus is a strange paradox mon that feels like on paper it should be really good. It's got a great speed tier along with big special attack, but here's the problem. Dark flying sucks. It relies on Dark Pulse, a sadly 80 base power move for its only Dark Stab, and its only real flying option is Hurricane, which is great when it doesn't miss. It could benefit from Electric Terrain with its Quark Drive ability, but then just powers up Electric types which it loses to. However, we can bust out the booster energy to rock a 50% speed boost to outspeed almost everything including Scarfmons, and Speedy Taunt can be super clutch to stop some setup. Hurricane does hit very hard if you get lucky, and we've even got some good coverage in Flamethrower or things like Earth Power. Iron Jugulus does leave a lot to be desired, but I believe it actually can be underrated and a bit better than people think. I feel like I'd warm up a bit to the Iron Fraud if it just had a cooler design. I mean, they had the ability to take a cool Pokemon like Hydreigon and make a badass robot version, but it's just kind of underwhelming. But I mean, I don't know, it's kind of still cool. Regardless, we're going to show the boys some love today. If you're into that kind of thing, you should hit that subscribe button. I'm working on hitting 400k and you could help me out. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so first of all, this match is a damn shootout. It's an extremely good one, and it comes right down to it. Now, my opponent's gonna lead off with the Meowskarada, as I, of course, have the Infernape. Great matchup for me, not so great knowing that they just have the Aloma Mola that they can switch into, and rather than going for any crazy fancy predictions and trying to go into Toxtricity, I decided I'm probably best off just setting up my Stealth Rock because that's what the lead Infernape does. So I get up my rocks, as of course, they do bring in the thickest fish you have ever seen. Aloma Mola is just a pain in the ass every time. We just know that I'm gonna have to try to grab a position to allow this thing to stop freaking switching around and going for regenerators and just being annoying. So obviously Infernape has no business staying in here. It's most likely just gonna be physically defensive with like a rocky helmet. So I decide I'm actually pretty free to switch into Drag Algae just because defensively you know, I can take anything this wants to deal with and I do hit pretty hard with you know adaptability Dracos. One of the reasons why I hate this fish even more now is because it does get access to flip turn, which then is going to allow them a position for a matchup. They do get the flip turn on my switch, and now this draws in the Meloetta vs. Dragology, which obviously I don't want anything to do with, and I decide, a hey, likely Psychic incoming, I actually have a nice little spot to bring in the Jugulus here. Now, as I do pop my booster energy, which gives me the nice little speed boost, the problem with this thing becomes it functions really well as kind of a late game sweeper, and if you... <laughs> If you pop your load a little early, like I have here, it becomes a problem later being able to switch in and not having that speed advantage versus things like the Meowskarada that I won't be faster than. But I figured it was worth it for me to switch into there, that free Psychic. And at this point, I do actually have you know, quite a bit of offensive pressure against their team. So I'm going to try to get as much value out of this thing as I can. So they're actually gonna, going to then pivot into their own Drag Algae, who hey, on a Dark Pulse actually does take a decent bit. So probably not, you know, max special defense or just Assault Vest. And I realize also, I'm thick enough to the point where I could probably, you know, take anything this wants to throw at me. And my best bet is just to go for another Dark Pulse and not risk you know, a Hurricane Miss, considering it probably doesn't see the kill there. Now, they do stay in. I, I get that Dark Pulse chip, which is actually really good, because that's one of their best kind of special sponges. And the amount of chip we've got there is actually really valuable. So, they actually end up going for another flip turn. Buddy is just pivoting all over the place, and that's kind of the scariest scenario in which it's gonna allow them if they get the predictions correct on switching a better matchups and the all the flip turning and u-turning is just so annoying but as they now bring in the great tusk we have an interesting kind of dynamic here because of course i we're kind of super effective against each other and my best bet is just to go for a hurricane hope i can connect i imagine they probably want to go for something like a rapid spin but actually they're gonna go ahead they're gonna commit the terra water and defensive terra on the tusk is definitely scary because now Hurricane's not going to do anything, but also it literally doesn't do anything because it misses, and that's just what happens with freaking Hurricane. Now that does allow them to then get off uh, the Rapid Spin, so it gets rid of the st the Stealth Rock, which is not ideal for me, just because we've seen their playstyle being very focused on the pivots and not being able to punish that is going to be you know, a bit unfortunate. So I decided to go for the Dark Pulse here. I, I figured. You know, if I'm not going to be able to bring this thing in back with a booster energy later, I, I probably should just try to get some value out of it now, even if that means I get close combated. But I actually get the flinch, which is solid. So now I can just Dark Pulse his ass right in his big old normal tusks again, and that actually kills the kills the tusk. So honestly, I'm kind of fine with that trade-off. While they did end up committing their Terra, I also get rid of the Great Tusk at the cost of basically them just getting rid of the Stealth Rock. So 
that feels pretty solid in giving me a big advantage in the match in general. Now, one of the other main problems about their team is this damn King Gambit. So as this thing comes in, we do notice that it is going to be Supreme Overlord, which sucks. But I do have the coverage with the Flamethrower, and that's going to be a nice little easy two-hit KO. And also, I'm able to then pop the, uh, the, the Air Balloon. So... The big thing is, I actually also live the the Iron Head. Honestly, Hydragon does a great job of living things you just don't expect. And at this point, uh, your freaking Sucker Punch is obvious, so I decided to go for the Taunt, just knowing that the Sucker Punch play is coming. Taunt is also good because then it's going to potentially stop it from going for something like a Swords Dance. And also, I don't really lose anything in that situation just knowing that the Sucker Punch is coming. So. At this point, I realize, you know, they don't have any Stealth Rock on my side of the field. That's going to allow uh, the Jugulus to come back in later and still be pretty fast against anything other, you know, than Meowskarada. So, as I imagine they Sucker Punch again, this is actually a free swap into good old-fashioned Rhydon. This thing is a defensive goat, and we don't give a shit about no Supreme Overlord assholes. So, I'm actually pretty free to potentially, you know, set up a Swords Dance. If there's anything on my side that can set up well uh, against their team, it's pretty much only going to be Rhydon. It's basically just because... King Gambit is such a good kind of like insurance policy in the back with those Supreme Overlord Sucker Punches. It's just so annoying and it basically stops me from setting up anything like Grumpig uh, or even my physical toxicity. So, the glaring issue with Rhydon being able to do anything meaningful is obviously this freaking defensive fish. And the reason why I'm fine setting up Swords Dance is just because then I can go ahead and commit a nice little Water Terra of my own. And that's going to make me so much better. Uh, defensively versus this, not having to worry about basically dying from being touched by a drop of water. So, they actually end up going for the Wish there. I'm able to get off an Earthquake, which does do a huge chunk, which is nice. And they potentially could go for a Protect, which they actually do not, which leads me to believe they probably don't have the Protect. Uh, but also, they make an, a solid switch here. Now, they bring in the Meowskarada, who is, first of all, I don't know what this thing's working with. That's kind of the main problem here. Um, the Earthquake is almost enough to kill it, and unfortunately, just not quite enough, and also... When the Wish comes through, brings it pretty much just right back to, to full there. So this is not a good matchup, but I decided to make a call here. So the you know the flower trick is obvious, but I've seen that their playstyle really relies on the pivoting. So I imagine they probably go for that U-turn. Also, if they don't U-turn there, I'm kind of covered because I know I can likely take a super effective flower trick anyway. So it was kind of a middle ground play. Now, I decide to go for the fire punch as they do end up pivoting, which is fine because as in comes the Meloetta, a fire punch is almost enough to knock it out. But it was probably actually a misplay on my end. I, I should have gone for the Earthquake there. It would have ended up killing the Meloetta. And now I find myself in a spot where Hyper Voice actually just does straight up knock me out. So down goes the Rhydon. Meloetta is hanging on by a thread, which is fine because it actually does open up a bit of momentum for me being able to revenge switch back in the Jugulus. I feel like this Meloetta is most likely choice specs, but I know most of all they don't have anything that can switch into this, which is great knowledge for me to have. So as I go for the Dark Pulse, they do just stay in, and essentially we trade the ride on for the Meloetta, um, and down goes a, a decent special threat. So this is now going to be able to drag right back in the Meowskarada, who is in fact faster, and also I see some really good value out of the Jugulus, so I don't necessarily want this thing to go down for nothing. Problem is also Meowskarada hits freaking hard, and you know I don't have a lot that wants to really deal with things like a knockoff. So. As I decide to switch into the Drag Algae, they actually end up going for the Flower Trick here, which is great because, I mean, I do resist, and even with a crit, yeah, that's, that's not going to do anything, which is, is fine. So, Drag is in a spot here where, you know, they don't have a great special sponge to deal with an attack here, and an Adaptability, Draco Meteor, or even just a Sludge Wave does really well, but one way to try to bring myself even further in, ahead of kind of the momentum is to be able to predict the switch, go for a flip turn, and grab another matchup. Most likely being bringing in back Jugulus, just because we know, you know that that thing can can do a lot to everything except for Meowskarada, who he does revenge switches back in. So I go for the flip turn, they decide to bring in their own seahorse, and we're just a couple of different colored pals. But I get that flip turn off, which is great, which then allows me to go into whatever we like. And look, one of the glaring problems is just that while Jugulus does come in here and grabs a kill on this, it draws back in Meowskarada. And one of the main things is like, I would be able to potentially bring in something like the Toxtricity, something like the Grumpig to try to set up. But the problem is they just apply so much pressure with the Sucker Punch friggin' King Gambit in the back that I just can't afford to do that. So I have to bring back in Jugulus. Now the Dark Pulse is going to be able to finish off the Drag Algae, which is great. And we're out here just slowly chipping away and you know, that's kind of the goal. So. Of course, back comes friggin' Meowskarada. At this point, we're definitely just trading blows. Pause. But I'm feeling like I'm in a spot where I, I, I can't give this thing up, and I'm kind of forced to make the, the same play 
back into Dragalge here because there's not really much else that can switch into this. I am going to bring in Mystery and I'm like, hey, how's it going? I'm just here to take my flower trick and have a nice little day, but instead they actually bust out uh, the triple axle. So they make the nice prediction on me bringing this thing in as the check. And yeah, that's that's going to be able, able to take care of me. So down goes Dragalge and well, that is unfortunate. I At this point, I feel like this thing's choice scarf. Something leads me to believe this is a scarf Meowth Garada. And I'm like, you know what? I can bring in Infernape here. Finally, at least being able to have a spot to kind of freely bring this thing in would actually be really nice because also an Iron Fist boosted little, little mock punch action, you know, with a life orb has a chance to kill here. It is ice type at this point, and that's what I'm going to go for. I bust out the mock punch, and it's not quite enough to be able to take care of it. Not only that, but also yeah, it's not Scarf. As they go for the U-turn, that's actually, I'm fine with that because that's going to do, you know, I'm able to get a considerable amount of chip and now I'm actually in a spot where I have a pretty decent idea. So, of course, that is going to drop back in this asshole who we haven't seen for a while, freaking Aloma Mola. Guy is playing uh, the pivots here nicely and obviously as I don't have a matchup here, I decide I'm going to take this opportunity to set up the Stealth Rock. What that's going to do is definitely punish that Meowskarada the next time it switches in. If it is able to live that first one, which I don't think it can, it definitely can't come in twice. So that is the plan. As I set up that Stealth Rock, uh, they decide to then just go for that flip turn, which is going to allow that asshole to come back in for free and grab some more health later. But more importantly, they bring in the Meowskarada here who doesn't take the Stealth Rock chip, which is just wildly unfortunate because that means it's freaking heavy-duty boots, which is worst-case scenario. But then I'm like, I can actually... I could actually just mock punch that thing, so, I mean, yeah. But they're, of course, just going to pivot right back into Loma Mola, and uh, a mock punch does literally nothing to that. And then I just take some, some Life Orb chip. Now, I also noticed, as this thing came back in, it didn't take Stealth Rock chip either. It, it, does that, that means this thing is also Heavy Duty Boots? It turns out the fish is dripping in the damn Tims also, and it, it's like, God damn it. So I go for the close combat there just to get some damage on the thing, and I realize probably a bad idea because it, it can just go for a wish. Now... I mostly am just frustrated. I just click. I just click some damage. I'm like, I need some damage here. I'm sick. Of, I'm sick of the switching. <laughs> and as they go for that wish, I'm like, yeah. I mean, that that just it, it checks out. So I lose the I lose the pressure with the mock punch infernape, and I feel like that's probably gonna come back to bite me. But out of my frustration in battling this damn fish, I just punch it. So I don't know. Anyway, this does at least allow me to go back into the freaking jugulus. As I'm like, I can actually maybe grab a kill here with a hurricane hit. Now. They actually are going to bust out to Protect, which just solidifies the fact that this might be the most hated Pokemon for me to battle of all time. And, yeah, the, the Wish is just going to connect, and it just brings it right back to pretty much full. And now I'm just over here like an idiot trying to just kill this this freaking fish over here. So I am just going to end up going for the Taunt now. I'm like, you know what? No more <laughs> no more, uh, no more, more wishing for you, good sir. I find my, I, my best shot might potentially be if I can set up something, you know, with the with the toxicity. So they go for the flip turn. Is going to be able to take care of the jugulus there. I realized the damage wasn't going to be meaningful. And if the I don't know. I thought they maybe try to wish back up the Meowskarada, which you know would be scary. So they do actually end up pivoting right back in the Meowskarada. Now I have two options left, and one of them basically being. You know, the Toxtricity is actually kind of my best bet here. And that's because, you know, I know I can take any attack this thing wants to throw at me and at least allow me to set up a shift gear, which should allow me to be faster. So, they're going to end up going for the U-turn here. Um, of course, transform into the freaking bug type. Doesn't do much, but does, you know, just a little bit here. It's going to allow me uh, to, to shut up, set up the shift gear. One also bad thing about my matchup versus their main wall being a Loma Mola is that if I was any ordinary Toxtricity, I would actually have a great matchup here because I could hit it with a special attack after you know, and, I'd, and I'd be fine but I'm actually a physical attacking one and as I go for that shift gear I'm like okay well I, my best bet is freaking thunder punch here because I, I I'm freaking for whatever reason <laughs> technician physical toxicity the goat I go for the thunder kick and it does around half also gets the full or for the freaking para which is like hey that's actually that's kind of nice but they're gonna wish again and that's actually I'm kind of fine with that it means I don't take any more damage than I need to, and also they can protect and get back to full, but I'm still just going to be in the same situation where Thunder Punch is great. So they don't go for the protect, and the Thunder Punch is going to be enough to kill the Alamomola. So with that thing gone, we have the game opened up a whole lot more. Now, of course, the problem is this damn King Gambit. I, some of the just my most hated mods to play against, but as King Gambit comes in, here's the thing. It has a pretty strong Supreme Overlord because they've got four dead, and the only thing I can really do at this point is... Hope that I can live a sucker punch. So they go for that. So I cannot. It, there's just there's just no shot that I live that sucker punch. So 
Well, that is unfortunate. I still actually have a chance because here's the thing. Grumpig should potentially maybe be able to take one. I don't know. I, I'm fighting with freaking Grumpig and physical toxicity over here against some of the biggest damn threats. And sometimes it's tough. So all I can really do here is go for the Earth Power. I have the coverage. They actually don't go for the Sucker Punch. Maybe I, predicting me to go for something thinking they would Sucker Punch. But that works out for me. And now we got ourselves a little 1v1 situation. It allows the Miyazuka Rata to come in. Now here's the thing. If I can somehow live a knockoff, I can win the game. If I cannot, you know, Grumpig, Grumpig most likely goes down with his little march here. But we've gotten ourselves in a position where if this thing didn't have heavy duty boots, uh, we would definitely have the game won. So the boots have just saved this thing's life over and over again. All I can really do here is go for an earth power. Now I haven't consumed a berry, so I cannot belch. Only thing I can do is click earth power and pray. I am at full health. Grumpig definitely is better on the special side, but they go for that knockoff. And while I do, of course, have my Salic Berry, and it's going to turn to the Dark Type, and yeah, I just die. The, the knockoff is going to be able to take care of Grumpig, and that is going to be, you know, the end of the match there. So, honestly, really well-played game on his side. Some obvious misplays on my end. I really should have conserved Infernape. I, I, there was, was one turn there with the close combat versus the Aloma Mola that basically lost me the match, but also... The Meowth Scarada having heavy duty boots kind of just sealed the deal anyway. So, really good game. Sometimes it happens. And with that, we have ourselves another match here. I will also say, every time I post any games where I do showcase a loss like that, there's always comments like, dude, you suck, you're horrible, you, you obvious misplay. Yeah, listen, I make misplay. I, I'm, that's just what happens. I'm not perfect. And I like to showcase when things don't go exactly according to plan. I mean, it's just... It's part of the game, and the inevitable comments of me being like, dude, you're so bad, are just always going to be there. But let's get into the next match, because this is also a good one, and I'm just here to have fun and mess around. So, they decide to lead off with the little baby dolphin. I, of course, have the lead Infernape. The lead ape is back, baby, and better than ever. We, <laughs> I just love... I love this Infernape. It's, no one expects it to be a stealth rock lead, and I'm just here to just lay down some, some, some pointy rock. So... They actually, they go for the flip turn, also we see that they go first, and that, while I do take a nice little chunk of damage, that's actually kind of good information for me to know that that's gonna be a Scarf uh, Palafin there, so that's actually pretty good. I can now set up my Stealth Rock freely, and they decide to bring in the big ol' Salt Minecraft bitch-ass monster. So, Garganacle, I mean, I have the close combat here, I'm thinking, do they commit a Terra this early? I'm just gonna click the close combat regardless. I only, I only have a few, a few left in the chamber with that life orb anyway. Turns out they are just gonna let it take the close combat. It does actually live, but I knock it down to red, which is honestly really meaningful damage against a thing that just also never wants to die. So that feels pretty good. And unfortunately they do hit me with the salt gear, which you know, does take care of the Infernape. So at least I was able to get up my stealth rock. I got you know the Garganacle down to the point where basically anything can pick it off. And I feel like that's you know a, a pretty fair trade. So now being able to, you know, revenge switch in whatever I like, I decide I'm gonna bring in Drag Algae. I know that I can knock this thing out with anything on the special side, and then honestly, look still pretty good after that. Now, as I come in here, I'm just gonna go, basically, I considering a flip turn if they want to switch, but I'm just gonna go for the Draco Meteor. Now, that's just because pretty much nothing really, like, wants to switch into that Draco Meteor, and so it's kind of just my best bet. Turn, they're just gonna go for the Protect because... If there's one thing Garganacle's gonna do, it's gonna be best friends with the Loma Mola and just be annoying as shit. So, it, of course, it's just gonna take that opportunity to protect, get a little bit of leftovers, which isn't really gonna save it, and I'm like, I do not want to risk a Focus Blast, so I'm gonna go, you know, for that Draco Meteor still, and yeah, that takes care of it. So, big defensive monster, kind of out of the way. Now, that's gonna open up the game for potential things like Toxtricity, and uh, we, we, we love to see that asshole go down. So... They now have a revenge switch of their own, and it turns out they're going to end up bringing in the Dragonite. So good news, Stealth Rock is going to knock off this thing's uh, freaking multi-scale ability, which is great. Going to be able to hit it for a whole lot more damage. Problem is, I don't necessarily know exactly what this thing wants to do, so thinking considering maybe they want to go for a Draco Meteor, or a, sorry, a Dragon Dance, I'm going to Draco Meteor, but instead, no, they just straight up Outrage, which, yeah, that definitely is going to kill my Seahorse, but... That's actually, I'm fine with that, because now, guess who's got guess who's got the door open, baby? It's freaking Rhydon with the Eviolite and these crazy defenses. I know that I can take an Outrage basically all day long out here, which is definitely not bad. Now, as much as I want to set up a Swords Dance here, I know that that means I'm going to have to take at least two Outrages. And then they have the problem of a couple things, like the Venusaur in the back. They also have a Zorark who can hit me on the special side, and I just will not be left 
with enough health, which is one of the things that Rhydon struggles with, is trying to set up and then still having enough health to tank attacks, not being, you know, faster than things. So, as I'm able to finish off the Dragonite with a, a nice little, little Stone Edge action, this allows them to bring in Annihilate, another very scary threat, and this thing is, I don't have a lot of answers to, but I decide, I'm actually, I'm gonna bring in some Bacon, you know, freaking Chris P, Bacon comes in here, they go for the Drain Punch, which is good because you know, I can take that, but also, at this point, I know that a Rage Fist, without me touching them, I should be able to take, no problem, especially with the Terra Poison here. Not only that, but I'm able to set up a Nasty Plot, and that's gonna bring me down into Salic Berry range. With Gluttony, all you need is to be at half HP, and I can get that Salic Berry and basically be faster than a whole lot of stuff. Now, they actually end up pivoting, they're gonna end up bringing in the Venusaur here. So as I commit the, the Poison Terra, this is not the audience, you know, we were freaking looking for, but I imagine they were probably worried you know, about that Psychic coverage. And as they bring in Venusaur, that just leads me to believe that this is probably not the Venusaur, right? I mean, they have the Zorark back there. And as I set up my Nasty Plot, here's a couple things. So, being Poison-type versus Zorark is still fine. I know that on the special side, this thing can't knock me out here. So, I actually meant to click Earth Power here. Turns out I actually end up clicking the, the, the Psychic Noise. Now, I do actually end up living the attack just barely, and that is exactly what we needed, because that's going to give me the nice little speed boost. And while the Psychic Noise obviously doesn't affect it, it doesn't matter. I, I mean, regardless, had I even clicked the correct move in Earth Power, it doesn't matter because now I know that after a Nasty Plot and a Salic Berry, a freaking a Stab Belts with the Terra is going to be able uh, to take care of a Zorak, especially considering no Focus Ash with the freaking Stealth Rock up. So that is going to take care of the damn Imposter, and uh, we, we barely were able to, to hang on there. So that takes care of that. Problem is this freaking guy. So Grumpig is not going to be able to grab the sweep that we want from this fella because of course they have the Dolphin who is, we know that it's Choice Scarf but also has the potential to be running Jet Punch if it wasn't so I'm just, I don't have enough health to be able to deal with it. They are going to be able to outspeed, finish me off with the flip turn and uh, yeah that's going to take, that's going to take care of the Grumpig. At base 80 speed we're able to outspeed a lot of stuff with South Berry but you know definitely not most things running Choice Scarf as long as they're decently fast. So the good thing about being knocked out by the flip turn is that now I can decide to switch in whatever I like on a matchup because they have to bring in Venusaur first, the actual Venusaur, mind you, and I can bring in whatever I feel like here. So I'm running pretty low on options, but what we do know is, you know, Toxicity actually has a great matchup here for a couple reasons. First of all, I know that I can take an attack from a Venusaur and that's going to allow me to set up a, a shift gear. Now shift gear is great because it gives us a plus two to speed uh, which does make us extremely fast. So we're out here just shifting our gears and once we get to second gear you're not gonna like you're not gonna like Jimmy. So they go for they go for the leech seed here. Shows me it's more of a defensive kind of Venusaur which you know most cases as long as it's not on a Sun Team that's what it's gonna be. So the leech seed is annoying but not like kind of an eminent threat so I'm actually feeling pretty good about that because now I'm sitting at plus one attack I've got that plus two speed and we're faster than everything and we're we're out here just zooming around. So considering maybe going for another shift gear, I decide I should probably just grab myself some more damage here. But they, they're going to end up busting out the protect once again. I really dropped the ball on not being able to set up another shift gear there on that protect would have been absolutely amazing. Uh, but moral of the story is, I mean, even after some more some more elite seed, I know that I can take attacks here. And I only really need one shift gear regardless. So I can at least this time connect on a poison tail. It is going to be an easy two hit KO on the thing. And as they bust out Giga Drain, this thing is just out here draining me. Pause. He's draining me on the Giga Drain and on the freaking the lead seed. This guy's a thief, just stealing my health out here. Now, on this next turn, I know that they're more than likely just going to go for their Protect again, which is going to open the door for me to maybe just set up another Shift Gear. And this Leech Seed is starting to stack up. It, it got himself back to a point where a Poison Tail doesn't kill. And I'm like, well, I might as well just go for the extra Shift Gear here. I also am noticing that Jugulus in the back is looking like a fantastic win condition because I have coverage on everything they've got left. So let's take a look. See, they, they have the Venusaur. I've got the Hurricane or the Flamethrower. They have the Annihilate, who dies to a Hurricane if I can connect on it. And then they have the, uh, the, the the Dolphin, who doesn't necessarily die from one attack, but I know I can take an attack from it, and with my booster energy, I'm faster than it being Choice Scarfed. So that's kind of the, the plan I'm playing to here, as I, I get up another shift here, but a Poison Tail, sadly, is just not going to be enough to take care of it. 
uh, with that technician boost and everything. But, uh, you know, Giga Drain is at least going to get it back to a, to a sliver of health. And then I just died to the Leech Seed and I'm like, Toxicity, you have failed me. You should probably go check out my physical technician Toxicity video if you haven't already. This thing is actually pretty wild and it's actually really fun to play with. So down I go to the Leech Seed, but guess what time it is, baby? This is exactly the situation where Iron Jugulus is able to shine because... With my booster, I am going to be faster than than everything, even things with Choice Scarf. We've got ourselves the, the the benefit of a Choice Scarf, but I also am able to switch moves. And that's why Booster Quark Drive speed is actually kind of wild. So we get that speed boost as we come in. We have enough chip on the Venusaur uh, to where it dies from anything. I just decided to go for the Dark Pulse. It is going to be able to take care of it. Down goes the, the thick-ass warty boy, and now we've got two mons left, and basically Jugulus has to pull this one home for me you know, for that chance to win. So, first of all, they're going to bring in the Dolphin, because with this Choice Scarf, they probably think that maybe they have a chance to be faster, but they don't, because I'm quick as hell. And I know that a Dark Pulse or a Hurricane most likely won't kill, but I know also I can take any attack this wants to throw at me, and as they go for that Ice Punch, we do live. So, thank God, and now... Knowing their Scarf, they can't go for a Jet Punch if they even have it. A Dark Pulse is able to take care of it. And now we've got ourselves a good old-fashioned matchup against uh, Annihilate, who, you know, is full health. But a Hurricane with that Stab hits pretty damn hard. If I can connect on this Hurricane, we can find ourselves with a big fat dub. Now, problem is, easier said than done, because Hurricane always misses. However, I do actually connect, and that is going to be able to be enough to take care of of the Annihilate. So luckily the Jugglist comes in, cleans up the match for us exactly you know how this thing's supposed to. So that's going to be the end of that one. Super good game and while this is an extremely long video I have one more bonus match for you because why not. So this time we're working with a bit of a different squad. However we do still have the Jugglist and we're going to see if we can get some good value out of this bad boy against a, a pretty scary team so let's go ahead and get into it. So this time my dude is going to go ahead and lead off with the Alolan Ninetales. Now of course we know this thing is just going to be here to set up an Aurora Veil. And that's going to make things, it's going to make things a little more interesting for us. So there's a couple different things, at least benefit that I can get out of them having the Alolan Ninetales. And that is because this is a Red Ice team. And them setting up the snow for me allows me to not have to use my Obama Snow. And that's kind of good. So Risking the fact that, you know, they could have just gone for the freeze-dry turn one, I decide, you know, with the, the Gastrodon, I'm just going to set up some Stealth Rock here, and it, we're all safe. So, I, I don't have really much business staying in here, and as I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know what, there's actually not really a better time to just bring in my Red Jites here. I know that on the special side, I'm an absolute monster tank that even a Moonblast is going to do, like, nothing to me, so... I, and not only that, but I also have the benefit of Ice Body. Using their snow, I can actually heal myself every turn, so... They're now going to bust out the freeze dry in case we stayed in with the Gastrodon. That is going to do nothing. And then I'm like, oh, actually, I'm just building myself up like a freaking snowball here with that ice body. And then you see that last HP we're missing? Yeah, Leftovers is going to take care of that. So we, we bring in Red Ice essentially for free. And I'm actually in a spot where, first of all, I'm, I know I'm not going to be able to do much offensively with that Aurora Veil sticking around. So I'm kind of free to set up some curses here and make this thing not only be crazy on the physical defensive side along with the special, but also be pretty good on the physical offensive side. So they bring the, the Iron Treads in. Now this thing does get an attack booster energy, and I'm like, well, I mean, that's not really ideal, but I have one thing going for me at least is that I'm able to get up the curse, which is great because now I'm at plus one defense. I also have the natural defensive 50% boost that comes with it being an ice type in snow, However, I just know that they're going to go for some type of steel coverage. So I'm actually, I'm going to bust out the Terra Water here. Uh, just kind of hoping that they're going to try to pull out a Heavy Slam or something of the like. And I can turn myself, at least melt myself a little bit and turn into a friggin' Ice Fountain. And do some Beer Illusion off. So, they go for that Heavy Slam, which is great. Because with that defensive Terra, we're able to take nothing from it. And now, after an attack boost, an Earthquake is, yeah, still, you know... <laughs> Not going to do anything. However, I, you know, at least at this point, I get all the way back to full HP. And this is exactly kind of what this Red Ice is, is built to do. While we're not super crazy offensively, if I can stack up some more curses, I get impossible to kill. And then slowly but surely, we become an offensive threat. And also, if you haven't peeped the Red Ice video, you should definitely watch that as well. So, they take this opportunity to just go for the Rapid Spin. Going to get rid of my Stealth Rock. Doesn't do anything to me in return, but getting rid of the rocks is, is some good value. But... I'm going to go ahead and set up another curse. At this point, I've now doubled my attack and my physical defense. I am crazy on the special side, and honestly, the Terra Water still looks pretty good 
against most of what they have left. So with the Aurora Veil still up on their side, I, I know I'm not going to be able to do too much here. And I'm just going to fully try to take advantage of the situation and just set up another curse. Now they're going to go for the knockoff, hit me with a little trunk slap. Does get rid of my leftovers, which is annoying, but I'm just going to curse again. And at this point, Red Dice is, is becoming a damn monster. And that's exactly what we want out of our crazy iceberg fella. This thing is going to sink the shit out of any Titanic that comes our way. So now I'm going to go for the Earthquake. I'm like, okay, at least I can get some good damage at this point. And they're actually going to make a nice, at least a decent swap here. They're going to bring in Dragonite, who uh, is free from Stealth Rock damage. So it does keep its multi-scale intact. And uh, an Earthquake isn't going to touch it. But the good thing is, I know that I can take any attack this one. So throw at me. And here's the thing. I'm finding myself in a spot where I'm like, ooh, can I go for a spicy play here? I expect they go for the Terra Normal, just knowing that I'm cursed up and can take any attack from this thing. So I decided to go for the Hammer Arm, expecting the Terra Normal, and it doesn't happen. I end up just slinging that thing at him <laughs> for no reason, and it doesn't do anything either. Also, it's important to note that I probably should run Body Press on this thing, as long as I plan on getting at least more than one curse. But uh, Hammer Arm's just cons consistent damage if you have one curse, that's why I'm running that in the first place. But uh, I, know I actually can take the second outrage which is amazing and then allows me to fire off the you know the avalanche it does take care of the dragonite which is great but i've just got myself to a point where i've taken too much chip damage at this point and uh yeah that's gonna allow them to just bring in the Karada, who is faster and is also carrying energy ball and we take a nice little energy ball to the face and that's gonna take care of red Jai. so not the full you know setup sweep that we want to see out of the guy but at least we're able to take care of, you know, the Dragonite. And uh, I also still am looking pretty healthy in the back. And we've got some momentum on our side. So here's the thing. I also have myself a little uh, little, little Meow Stick. I think I still called it Meow Scarada a second ago. Meow Stick, not Scarada. So I bring mine in. And mine's probably a little different here. So I, my plan is to go for a Nasty Plot. And know that I can take an attack from this thing. They're going to end up going for the Charge Beam and it misses. So I'm like, hey, that's actually... You know, it's pretty solid. I know that I'm faster, and while I also have the coverage with a Shadow Ball, I am Throat Spray. And even after a Nasty Plot, I'm no, I know I'm not super strong, you know, on the special side. So I'm going to try to first be able to get my Throat Spray off, and then be in the money with the plus three. So they're actually going to bust out a defensive Terra of their own. They're going to pull out the Terra Grass, which is going to make it so they wouldn't, you know, take too much from a Shadow Ball here. But I am Luring Voice anyway. Which is like, let me sing you this shitty song real quick that just hurts your ears, but it hurts my throat also, so I can bust out a little throat spray. And now we're chilling at plus three special attack. So the thing is, they also have the coverage with their own Shadow Ball. It doesn't necessarily do a whole lot of damage, but I know that I definitely die from the next one. And then the problem also becomes with this defensive Terra, it actually is able to live the damn psychic noise. That's just because Meowstic just does not have enough firepower on the special side. I, I kind of expected that to kill, but it doesn't, and then I just die to the Shadow Ball, and I'm like, well, shit. You know, one of these days, one of these days, we're gonna be a Throat Spray threat, but not not today. So, here's the thing. At this point, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna bust out the jugular. It is, t it is time for Big Jug to, to make some moves here. I come in with my crazy pink hairdo, and I, I get that Quark Drive, which is now gonna make me faster than everything guaranteed. And uh, I'm just like, you know what, I, a, a Dark Pulse is certainly in range to kill here, and that's going to finish off the Meowstic. So at least they were able to, I mean, we're able to get rid of their defensive Terra, so now we don't see any more shenanigans coming out of them uh, defensively. And Jugulus is actually in a really good spot here, because as they bring in the Mian Shao, this is, a, this is a kind of fellow that's always rocking a Choice Scarf, at least a lot of the time, and I am just a little bit naturally faster. So as I go for the Hurricane, it, it, it has a berry. It has the, the, the flying resist berry, but I actually get the kill through that regardless. No Koba berry action for you. I really thought that uh, they were going to try to outspeed with a choice scarf, but with my booster energy and like three more base speed points, we outspeed regardless. But hey, it still works out. We take care of the Mian Shao, and here's the thing. So Alolan Ninetales is still at full health, and this thing is a threat. Now, I have the option to go for a taunt, but... If I make the wrong call and they just go for like a Moonblast or just a Blizzard, I'm in a really bad spot. So I decide I'm just going to go for the guaranteed damage with the Flamethrower. That's going to open the door to where at least something like Raichu can be able to grab a kill here. And they actually are just going to go for that Aurora Veil. So a Taunt actually would have been beneficial. Uh, however, the, the good middle ground play was just some, some solid chip there. So at this point, even through the Aurora Veil, I should be able to grab a kill with the Flamethrower. And uh, here's the thing, they are going to end up swapping out the Ninetales. And I know exactly 
what their plan is going to be here. As they go into the Feraligator, this is the kind of fella that benefits a lot from being able to tank hits. And that's because Feraligator, pretty much 99% of the time, is going to go for a Dragon Dance here. Now, I realize that a Dragon Dance is going to make it faster than everything and allow it to sweep my entire team. So, I can actually bust out the Taunt. I know that I'm faster. And we do get the prediction correct. They try to Dragon Dance, which is great. Because literally this thing clicking Dragon Dance once wins them the game. And without them being able to set that up, we are now at least in a point where we can bring this back. And they are still at least behind that Aurora Veil. So my Dark Pulse doesn't do anything. Um, but I just need to ensure that I at least get enough chip on this thing to where I can revenge kill it. And this Feraligator is definitely the, the biggest threat I have to worry about. So I go for another Dark Pulse just hoping for a flinch or something. Doesn't end up happening sadly. Uh, which then allows them to finish me off with a crunch. So down goes the Jugulus, but we got the best value we probably could have hoped for out of this thing, and that is just basically that taunt, because if they ended this matchup at plus one, we were in a, a pretty decently bad spot, because behind an Aurora Veil, nothing other than Raichu can really touch it. So I can now bring in the Raichu, who is in fact faster, and uh, we are able to outspeed, get off that Thunderbolt, and behind that Aurora Veil, we got enough chip with the Jugulus to where it actually goes down. So that honestly feels like it saves me the game. For Alligator was definitely their, their kind of win condition uh, setup threat there. And now they're down to two mons left. It's gonna be the Alolan Ninetales along with the, the, the Iron Treads here. So as in comes the Treads, I do have the coverage with a Surf. Kawabunga on his ass and it actually, you know, doesn't do a whole lot of damage just because of the fact that uh, freaking Aurora Veil's annoying. But they actually make the good play here. They're gonna end up going for the Rapid Spin, which is going to allow it to be faster, but I'm not super concerned about the tread. And that's just because I have a good defensive check in the Gastard on left uh, to, to handle this thing. So they are going to be able to then outspeed and take care of the Raichu. However, down goes the Aurora Veil. And as long as uh, Gastrodon is alive, we're in a pretty good spot here because Gastrodon checks the Iron Treads. And then I also have a Bomba Snow, who is a pretty good check to their Alola Ninetales, who did take a lot of chip damage there. So they go for the knockoff here. Um, it's not going to do much damage. It does get rid of my Rindo Berry, which is there for grass moves regardless. But I can then get off that uh, nice little Earth Power. Power his ass with the power of the Earth, and that's going to kill freaking Metal Don Fan. And now the final Mon being the Alola Ninetales. This thing comes in. It is not super healthy. And while it does have the coverage and with that Freeze Dry, nothing like a little, nothing like a little Freeze Dried Snail to just ruin your day. So they do get off that Freeze Dry, and it also does kill me, which does suck, but it's fine because looking at this matchup, uh, there's nothing they have that can one-hit one KO my Obama Snow. And even if they have an Aurora Veil up, I should easily be able to grab a kill uh, with like an Energy Ball. So I bring in the, the, the late game Frosted Mini Wheat, usually for breakfast, this time for dinner, this late in the match. I bring this fella in, and all I gotta do is take an attack without a freeze or a crit. They go for the Blizzard, doesn't do a whole lot of damage. And an energy ball is going to be able to come through and uh, solidify the game there. So that is going to be the end of the match. I thought that was a super interesting one, showcasing the fast taunt coming in very clutch. And uh, a, a pretty fun game with some, some fun teams. So thank you guys very much for watching. For real, if you did actually stick around and watch all three of the games today, I, I really you, you are the true MVP. And uh, I appreciate you. And with that, I will catch you next time. Peace out.